The latest on UN Climate Summit COP26 in Glasgow, Glasgow, Scotland, activists in costumes have posed as world leaders playing in a traditional Scottish bagpipe band on Monday as world leaders came together at the UN Climate Conference in Glasgow. The Oxfam campaigners wore kilts and said that world leaders need to come up with more action and not only hot air to tackle the climate crisis. These leaders, instead of reducing emissions and putting the world on a safer path, they are just blowing hot air, and we have had enough of hot air and empty promises, what we are asking for is for concrete action," Oxfam climate policy lead Nafco Dobby said. We need climate finance, poor countries need climate finance, vulnerable communities need climate finance, and they need to be serious about this. To support vulnerable countries, to adapt to the worst impact of the climate crisis. Rome before arriving in Scotland for the UN Climate Conference, President Joe Biden had a private mass celebrated for him in Rome to mark an important Catholic feast day that it was Biden's second liturgy in Rome after he relayed that Pope Francis told him he should continue receiving communion despite opposition of some conservatives over his abortion stance. The Red David McCallum, an American Jesuit who heads a Jesuit leadership program in Rome, said on Facebook that he celebrated the All Saints Day liturgy for Biden and his team on Monday before they left for Glasgow. The location was listed as Villa Taverna, the residence of the U.S. ambassador to Italy. The Associated Press previously reported that Biden had received communion on Saturday during the Vigil Mass at St. Patrick's Church, the American parish in Rome. Glasgow, Scotland. The head of the United Nations warned leaders at the Global Climate Summit in Glasgow that we digging our own graves by burning fossil fuels and destroying the environment. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres said at the ceremonial opening of the two-week talks Monday that believing recent announcements by governments could turn the tide on climate change were an illusion, not least because there are serious questions many countries pledges as we open this much-anticipated climate conference. We are still heading for climate disaster," he said. Guterres urged major economic powers, including emerging nations like China, to go the extra mile because they contribute the lion's share of global greenhouse gas emissions. He also criticized a confusion over emissions reductions targets and announced the creation of a new group of experts to propose clear standards for measuring commitments from businesses and other non-state actors. Moscow, the Kremlin says that Moscow remains fully committed to global efforts on controlling climate change even though Russian President Vladimir Putin won't attend the UN climate conference this week. Putin spokesman Dmitry Peskov said the format of the conference in Glasgow wouldn't allow the Russian president to address the gathering via video link. But he added that Putin will record a video address to be delivered to a forest and land use conference which is part of the UN climate conference. Peskov told reporters Monday that Russia fully shares global climate efforts and will stick to its goal to achieve carbon neutrality by 2060. The US and the EU have prodded Moscow to set a more ambitious goal and achieve carbon neutrality by 2050. Peskov charged that Russia is already ahead of some Western European countries regarding the share of low carbon power generation sources. The Kremlin spokesman also emphasized the need to pay special attention to the needs of developing countries while mapping global climate efforts and consider their low emissions in the past. Glasgow, Scotland, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has opened a global climate summit saying the world is strapped to a doomsday device. Johnson likened the Earth's position to that of fictional secret agent James Bond strapped to a doomsday device that will destroy the planet and trying to work out how to defuse it. He told leaders we are in roughly the same position and that only now the ticking doomsday device is real and not a movie. He was kicking off the World Leaders Summit portion of a UN climate conference aimed at getting an agreement to curb carbon emissions fast enough to keep global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius below pre industrial levels. Britain's leader struck a gloomy note on the eve of the conference after a group of 20 leaders made only modest climate commitments at their summit in Rome. Glasgow, Scotland. 
Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi was warmly greeted by UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson as he arrived Monday for the ceremonial opening of this year's Global Climate Summit. Modi's speech was hotly anticipated by delegates hoping to hear new plans for how India, the world's third biggest emitter of greenhouse gases, will reduce emissions going forward. Leaders from major emerging economies including China, Russia, and Brazil weren't attending the summit in Glasgow, Scotland. Their absence was interpreted as blow to international efforts to spur more ambitious action against global warming at the October 31st to November 12th meeting. Glasgow, Scotland, President Joe Biden has arrived at the UN Climate Conference in Glasgow for two days of meetings with world leaders meant to spur action on controlling climate change. Biden is among leaders who are set to address the gathering on Monday. He flew into Scotland from Rome, where he attended a group of 20 nations summit that wrapped on Sunday. Biden will also attend some side events at the conference and a reception Monday evening with leaders and other guests invited by the host, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson. The US is seeking to push other nations to make bold commitments on curbing the emissions that are blamed for the Earth's warming while Biden's domestic climate plan awaits a vote in the US Congress after multiple delays. Copenhagen, Denmark Sweden's Prime Minister says it's a shame that rich countries haven't been successful in meeting a pledge by rich countries of $100 billion a year until 2025 to help poorer nations fight climate change. Swedish Prime Minister Stefan Löfven told a news conference in Glasgow at the 26 Colombian Peso Summit that it is obvious that there will be tough negotiations. He was quoted as saying by Swedish news agency TT that more needs to be done to ensure that the goal of limiting the temperature increase to 1.5 degrees can be achieved. Lofven added that the science is very clear. We must speed up the implementation of the Paris Agreement. He also still sees positive signals and singled out, among other things, the Group of Twenties agreement over the weekend to limit global temperature increase to 1.5 degrees as an example. Thank you for watching. Please, subscribe.